So by going through the turnoff procedures like we have before, you'll pretty much eliminate any gas being trapped uh, between the cylinder and this rotary valve here. So now you can take the wrench, like I said, it's over here, but typically it'll be uh, probably lying uh, right there uh, or somewhere on this particular system. So it is an adjustable wrench. In order to open the width, you just roll it uh, down, close the width, you roll it up, and to fix it, just basically set it on the nut and open it and close it until you get it to the right, right width for that. When you're break, breaking a bolt loose, It'll just be the same with these lefty loosey, righty tighty. So you'll set this on, on the top, tighten it up a little bit. And whenever you're breaking the bolt loose, you always uh, pretty much pull, pull the wrench towards you. So bring it down, that'll, that'll loosen it relatively well. So now all you've got to do is unscrew the nut and the pigtail itself will hang down. So if I were asking you to come in here and connect connect the, the cylinder, you're gonna see that we're gonna use the cylinder that is full. Some of these cylinders, if they're full and they're used for first, first time, they'll have a green cap over the these threads here. You'll remove that cap and then you'll wanna make sure that you alert people that you're getting ready to crack a cylinder. You've gotta crack a cylinder because there could be some debris and stuff inside of uh, that opening. Also, what you want to make sure that you do is you try not to, when you're doing this, you want to have gloves on. I don't have a set on right now because I'm not going to be putting my fingers uh, over those threads or anything, but it is very possible that the oils and stuff from your skin uh, could very well uh, cause, cause a fire. Chances of that happening are pretty slim to none, but they could actually cause a fire if there happened to be a spark or what have you in the high presence of oxygen. So what we're going to do is we're going to crack the cylinder to blow out any debris. Cracking the cylinder. So you crack the cylinder, you've done that, and you just, all you gotta do is open it up real quick, close it back, and you're gonna reattach uh, the system. So take this, line it up like so, and then begin to, to screw it on. Very important, you're gonna wanna make sure that that turns with relative ease. If not, you're gonna be cross-threading those threads, and you don't wanna cross-thread the threads because then we've gotta change some stuff out. So if it doesn't seem to go in, you can put it on, reposition it, and also, uh, a lot of times if you'll set this up, you can turn it backwards and the thread should click into place and then it'll roll right on relatively smoothly. So what you'll want to do is tighten that up as best you can with your fingers or your hand and then you'll take the wrench, slide it over again and then snug it up and you'll push, push away from you in order to do that. So now that I've got that snugged up, if I wanted to, I could turn the system on again. And just to recap, you're going to make sure everything's off so that you don't get smacked in the face with anything. We'll start with the cylinder. Cylinder's on. All the way to the left. Back a half turn to the right or a quarter of a turn to the right. Go to this rotary valve that's attached to the pigtail extension. Turn this one on. All the way to the left. Back a quarter half turn to the right. And then you'll turn the main shutoff valve or the main cylinder bank valve. You'll turn it to the left on. You can hear that rush of gas. Now we've got uh, roughly 650 PSI, just like we had before. It's been reduced down to 50 PSI. And that's what's going out to the, to the labs. To turn it off, we're gonna go in the same direction that we started, we're gonna turn the cylinder off. The reason we do this is because there's gonna be a little bit of gas here that will hopefully get able to escape its way out um, that doesn't get trapped between point A and point B. Now we'll turn this valve off. We'll turn this valve off. And we'll watch the, the cylinder pressure gauge drop to zero. Line pressure gauge stays at 50 because that gas is trapped between the, the reducing valve out to the station outlets and so forth where we're at. Um, good, so the next, the next video will talk about where the gas goes from, from here.